this is Angie Homley Zabo, your friendly neighborhood art teacher. Today I have a really long video for you, but it's really thorough and it's really good. If you want a great introduction to drawing and mark making, this is a really good place to start. I'll be doing a series of other videos on different mark making techniques to follow, but I really recommend starting with this one because there's a lot of basic techniques and understandings that I go over in depth in this video. So I'm going to teach you how to hatch. Hatching is repeated parallel lines that build to create value. So take a look, take your time, pause and practice, and let me know if you have any questions. Before we start hatching, you need to understand how to use your drawing pencils. Graphite drawing pencils, charcoal drawing pencils, they're all kind of set up with the same system. And it's this system of H's and B's. And what those letters mean on the end of your pencil is how hard the lead of the pencil is. And it's kind of like a negative number line. Your HB is your zero, and then anything higher than that, 2H, 4H, goes up. Anything lower than that are your Bs, 2B, 4B, 6B, 8B, goes down. So these are kind of your negative and your positive numbers, and your HB is your zero. Anything that has an H next to it is a harder pencil, and harder pencils are lighter. So the bigger the number, the harder the pencil, the lighter the pencil. So my 4H has my biggest number next to an H. It's my lightest pencil. Then I have a 2H, so slightly darker. HB is my zero. It's right in between. Then when we get to your Bs, Bs are your softer pencils. And again, the higher the number, the softer the pencil. So a 2B is slightly soft. A 4B is soft, a 6B is quite soft, and an 8B is very, very soft. When the pencil is sharper or softer, it will draw darker. What I'd like you to do now, if you've never used a pencil like this before, or if you're one of my students, is you're gonna kind of illustrate that to yourself by taking down some notes. So I'm gonna move my pencils off to the side. This is my 4H. I'm gonna write 4H equals very hard, very light. Then I'll move to my 2B. I'll do this, or I'm sorry, my 2H and repeat myself. 2B equals hard comma light and I'll go right down the row. Just copy what I have written. As you can see, just the process of writing things down shows you how those different pencils function. And it's really nice to be able to use that in a drawing when you're drawing in areas that are very dark to just use your dark pencils. And keeping things light is really hard for a lot of my students. Um, they want to draw with a lot of pressure, so lightening up is difficult. And that's where your H pencils come in super handy. They help you get those light values a lot, a lot easier. So you can see how it creates its own value scale. It's important how to use to know how to use your tools and what your tools mean. Um, some other tools that you'll want handy while we practice would be your vinyl or plastic eraser, a kneaded eraser, and a pencil sharpener. You may have noticed as I was drawing that my pencils are really, really sharp. I am a stickler for a sharp pencil. <laughs> it helps you to make beautiful marks. Um, you can be precise. Um, there's a time and a place for a dull pencil. As we're learning right now to be really kind of technical drawers in the beginning, it's not the time and place for a dull pencil. Keep your pencil sharp, keep your pencil sharpener handy, and keep your erasers handy too. As we start drawing, I'll explain when you use these two different erasers. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do, practicing learning how to hatch, is we're just gonna learn the movement. And I'm just gonna use my HB pencil for this because it's a pretty neutral pencil. A hatch is simply um, a repeated mark of a line over and over again that builds and layers to create value. So what I want you to do is try to use your pencil and keep doing passes over one area and try to create like a little bit of a mini value scale. So value scale is dark as you can get on one end and as light as you can get on the other. Um, and to get really light, we wanna have light marks. To get really dark, we push a little bit harder. You wanna to try to keep all of your marks going basically in the same direction. And you want to continue to layer. So don't start by pushing hard to get dark. 
you get dark by layering more marks. It creates a more robust and interesting surface to have more marks. And graphite, if you're using graphite, has a tendency if you push too hard to turn silver, uh, which is not typically desirable. Okay, so there's my little value scale with a hatch. That's the simple process. You pick a mark, go in the same direction, repeat over and over again. A hatch can happen in any direction. Some people like to hatch horizontally, some people might like to hatch vertically, or there might be a moment in a piece of art where you're hatching one direction or another. Um, my hand tends to like to make this movement, lower left to upper right. That's what's comfortable for my hand. Um, what I would suggest that you do is find which movement works best for you, and that can be your default, ha default hatch as we're learning. Um, so play around with making different directions of hatch and see what feels best for you. The other thing that you're going to want to do is think about your pencil movement. When I draw, when I draw marks, if it's a linear mark, my pencil makes an ellipse. An ellipse is a shape that moves, if you're looking from the top, around like this. A mistake that a lot of my students make is they'll put their pencil down on the paper, make their line, pick their pencil up. Down, up. And what happens is you get these really hard edges where your pencil starts and stops. And when you're starting to do an object, which we'll draw next, we're going to practice on a sphere, you'll get these weird edges in your values. So you really want your movement to be this elliptical shape. And I'll shift my camera in a moment to show you what that looks like. So try to do this kind of circular movement with your hand um, and get used to kind of a different hand movement. Now, in art, we practice just like we do in sports because art is a physical when we make art we're using our hands and our bodies in a physical way and we have to teach our hands and bodies to work in new ways sometimes so this movement with writing for you is not typical right so your hands not used to it it's going to feel awkward so when we practice we're teaching our body new movements and new ways to to move and we need to build our muscle memory and i want you to watch from this different view of me hatching so my hand and my pencil tip, they're coming in soft and slow and then they swoop up. What that helps with is it helps to reduce that start stop because it tapers the line as it comes in and it tapers it as it goes out. So I'm swooping. What you have to be careful of when hatching or when making this kind of swooping mark is that you don't swoop with the page, you swoop perpendicular to it so that your line stays straight. So as I hatch again, um, I'll see if I can slow down the video and you can kind of see it at a smaller level. When you slow down the video, you can see that it's not this big circle that I'm making. That's a waste of time and energy, but it's a little movement staying close to the page. All right, now that you know how to make that oval, that elliptical shape as you're drawing, as you're hatching, what I want you to do is keep practicing, building up those marks, practicing the hatching movement, figuring out what direction you like to hatch. Um, lefties, you're probably gonna prefer hatching if you do a di diagonal lower right to upper left. Um, and the other advice I give to lefties drawing, I always start drawing upper left to right, just like I'm writing. So I'll, if I'm doing a drawing, I'll draw here and then I'll move kind of down and away from left to right. What you're gonna wanna do drawing to avoid the schmear is start upper right and work to the left and down, okay? One last piece of advice, one thing to avoid when hatching, and I see a lot of students do this, and I think it's because they see how fast my hand moves when I'm demoing is when they hatch, they keep their pencil tip on the paper and they just go back and forth and they do this. And if I elongate it, this is what happens. That is not hatching, that is scribbling. We're not gonna do that in intro to drawing. There's a time and place for it, sure, in certain types of drawing, but this is not that time or place. So every mark you lift your pencil between, okay? Lift up and away, up and away. All right, so here's my sphere and just traced piece of masking tape. I put a horizontal line behind that sphere so it looks like it's sitting on a surface and towards us. And I decided where my light source was gonna be. I'm gonna have my light source coming in from the upper left corner. 
So my highlight and my lighter mid -to light tones and mid tones will be here. I'll have my form shadow here. Core shadow will come in through here, reflected light, and cast shadow. And I'll talk about all those shadow parts too as I draw. When we draw our spheres, I usually have my students start by drawing in the form shadow. And we're gonna start light, work dark, and then work back out to our very lightest values. So we're gonna start kind of in the middle. And we're gonna start with our HB, which is a relatively light drawing pencil. And what we're going to do with our HB is set up our hatch. So both the direction of the hatch that we're gonna follow and the basic shape of our shadow. And what you wanna work with is kind of a crescent moon shape. And if you notice, I'm starting at the edge of my circle and I'm building in. You wanna do relatively long hatches we don't want to do, if we do short little hatches, it'll start to look like another mark making technique, which um, I'll be making a video on in the next little bit that you can look for called scumbling is the name of the technique. Um, so we want to have nice long hatches. We want them to all go in the same direction. And what we want to try to form shape wise, and it's not a hard edge shape, but a basic shape is we want kind of a crescent moon shape. And over here, I went kind of straight down on this edge. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna use my kneaded eraser and I'm just gonna lighten up those marks a little bit so it's not such a hard edge. And with a kneaded eraser, we dab. Um, not like the great dance move from a few years back, but just a dab, dab, and it picks up the mark. I didn't use the plastic eraser. Plastic eraser is kind of for getting rid of all these edges. So I use the plastic or vinyl eraser right on the edges. If I use a vinyl eraser on a mark, it's it breaks the mark flow and you start to notice this eraser mark. So when I'm using mark making as a drawing technique, I always use my kneaded eraser to pull that graphite out. So I've got the start to my form shadow. And the shadow, the form shadow is the shadow that exists on the object from its as the object turns away from the light, that form shadow builds. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in with my HB still. Oh, look at me, I'm still straightening out that edge there. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. And I'm gonna start to layer value. One thing I tell my students all the time as we're learning drawing in my intro to drawing class is that drawing is a layering process. You build, you build, you build to get to dark values. You build, you build to build to get to even light values. And you really wanna layer those marks. So drawing is a layering process. Say it again and again as you draw. And we're learning really technical drawing skills right now. Um, and so, you know, we're layering, we're building slowly. I'll tell you a lot of times, don't do this, do that. Um, the unfortunate thing about me saying that is there's really no hard or fast rules in art. You can kind of do things as it needs to be done for a particular piece, but it's a good idea to learn the rules in the beginning, learn those basic structures and like the traditional techniques. And then as you learn them and use them and hone them, you learn to break them, when to break them, how to break them, how to play with them, um, and when the best time is to do that on a drawing. So you can still see I've built in this form shadow, like the basic structure, kind of a nice crescent moon shape. I've stayed away from this light area where my highlight and lighter tones are gonna be. Um, and now what I'm gonna do still with my HB is I'm gonna build in what is called the core shadow. When you're looking at an object and you're drawing that object from observation, whether it's a photo or an actual object or person in front of you, um, you always wanna look for the shadow structures. And there's some pretty major ones that you should be aware of. There's lots of minor ones that as, as you learn to draw more and more and more, you can learn um, a great video tutorial and artist on YouTube is Proko. If you do Proko TV, he's got wonderful and amazing videos about more advanced value structures that you can look into. But as a beginning drawer, focus on your form shadow, the basic structures of that shadow, those shapes and forms, 
your core shadow, and your core shadow is the darkest portion of your shadow. So look at that form shadow and try to ID where are the darkest parts of the form shadow? Where can I see those darkest portions? Because not all parts of shadows have the same value. So where is your core shadow? And the way I'm drawing this sphere, my core shadow is gonna be kind of tucked in from the top of the form shadow and tucked up from the back. And back here, it gets a little lighter. And this is the next shadow structure that you should really be focused on. And that shadow structure is called, your, is called reflected light, okay? So what reflected light is, is when light pops down and it hits a surface, okay, this is a white surface right now, let's pretend it's white, that light hits that surface and it reflects back onto the object and it lights up the back side of your shadows. And some parts of your object are going to have more reflected light. Some might not have any reflected light, um, but, it's, but it's there and look for it. Uh, it makes a big difference in your drawing. Uh, eventually in my class, we'll start drawing portraits. And when we draw portraits, we really look for those places of reflected light on the face. Um, you'll see them under noses, on the bottom of noses, and things like that. So I'm just continuing to fill in my marks, trying to stay in line with, with my hatch, keep it lined up. And I haven't done that perfectly everywhere, and that's okay, right? This is just an exercise. And I start to build in this darker section of my crescent. What I'm gonna do now is switch to my next darkest pencil, which is a 4B. And I'm gonna come in with that 4B, and I'm gonna get darker in that crescent moon. I'm gonna stay away from the top part of this now because I want that to stay lighter. I'm gonna kind of suck my shadow in. As I'm doing these marks, I'm being careful that where they start and stop vary, so it doesn't stop in the same line all the time. It doesn't stop in the same place. Otherwise, I'll get weird shadow shapes or edges to shadows that are non-existent. Um, so you just wanna vary that a little bit. I usually start my mark in the darkest part of the shadow and then I pull out away into the lighter sections. So you can see me do that. And what I'm gonna do now, I'll speed up my video, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna go from my 4B to my 6B to my 8B and work up to really dark values. Once I've gotten to that 8B, I'm gonna come back on and I'm gonna talk you through the next step. At this point, I've gotten my core shadow nice and dark. And what I'm gonna start doing is working on perfecting this reflected light section of my piece. And then I'm gonna come in here. You can see there's a big jump from how dark this is to how light this is. I'm gonna work on using my marks to blend out that value from dark to light. I'm not gonna blend it with my finger, but I'm gonna use those marks to build in that value structure. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take, I was just at 8B, I'm gonna move backwards towards my light. So I'm gonna come in with my 6B and areas that I know are a little bit too light yet, like these edges here. I wanna see that reflected light, but I don't wanna have this space where it's this humongous jump from light to dark. So I'll come back and I'll fix this back edge with my 6B. And then I'm gonna jump back to my 4B and work up a little bit further. And I'm also gonna use my 4B to pull a little bit of value out towards my where my mid-tones exist. And then I'm gonna jump again to my 2B what you want to be careful of is in these lighter areas, you really want to layer those marks slowly because you want to have a lot of marks in your light areas too. You don't want it to look all stripey, typically. Um, so you want to layer those marks in, but you got to layer them maybe a little more slowly, a little more carefully than in your dark areas because in the dark areas, it's easy to cover it up if you make a mistake. A little bit trickier in those light areas, so take it slow and give yourself some grace. Remember, you're just learning and you're just practicing. So no stress, you make a mistake, 
Oh well, it's just a sphere in your sketchbook. You can always draw another one. Now I'm gonna pop back to my two or my HB. I'm gonna do a little bit more layering in this mid-tone area. And then what I'm gonna work on is blending out those light, light values from the edge of these mid-tones towards where the highlight would be. Technically, the highlight in drawing is this area of light reflection where the light directly hits the object. Whoops, I made a mark. Um, and what I wanna have in that area is this, this sense that the light kind of pulls out and away from it. So I wanna really work hard to build up some really light values when I get to that point. What I'm working on right now is getting some nice mid-tones through here, so medium to light grays through this section, so there's a nice blend from that core shadow out. There are times with different materials um, where you'll see the edges of shadows, like on water or on metal, where those the, the definition between different values is kind of hard-edged. Um, and so that's mostly on reflective objects, like I said, metal, water, things like that. On non-reflective objects, you'll see that the shadow structures tend to be a little bit smoother as they move from one to another. So I feel like I've got a fairly nice blend through the mid-tones, the dark mid-tones and the dark values of my sphere. And what I need to work on is just building up a little bit in my reflected light and then pulling some light, light values towards my highlight here without closing up that nice bright white section. So I've got my 2H and I'm just, I'm barely pressing. I'm holding my pencil like this and moving really slowly, just barely pressing, pulling out some really light values as I move towards the center here. Just gonna repeat that super light kind of tucking back in towards my other shadows pulling it back just really creating a nice blend there and then I'm gonna bring out my last lonely little graphite pencil my 4h and I'm just gonna build in just a little bit more I'm totally avoiding the lightest area of this this sphere because I want it to stay nice and bright I really want to have nice contrast between my highlights and my core shadows and my form shadows. And then at this point, I've got the basic, everything's kind of filled up and now I'm just gonna finesse. So now I pick and choose what I need. So I need to get a little bit darker through here. Um, and I think that my HB is gonna be the best bet for that. So I'll pop my HB in and I'll just work on making this nice and clean and full and layered. All right, if I'm happy here, my next step would be to come in with my vinyl eraser. If I made any, if I overdrew around my edges, come in and clean that up a little bit. Um, you know, sometimes my students will get too dark in certain areas, or I'll get too dark in certain areas. I can come in with my kneaded eraser then and pull out some value if I need to. You know, that was in a light section, but let's say I have like a blob up here, I can pull that out. Um, you never want to brush off your eraser marks, by the way. I always have students pick up your page, kind of knock them down. Because um, if I do this, whoosh, to brush off my eraser marks, I will get rid of all the beautiful mark making I just did. And I want to maintain that. I want you to see the hand of the artist there. Then I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna add some line quality and the darkest part of my line, I'm gonna use a 6B for. So I've got some nice dark line quality on the bottom, lightens up here. And then my next step would be to draw a cast shadow and that cast shadow is gonna kind of start here and swoop, swoop back in a way. So I'll give myself a little bit of a light edge. Um, I'm gonna get nice and dark. I like to, if I'm hatching, when I do the um, cast shadow, I will often hatch in a different direction, um, often horizontally, because it gives a nice impression of the object being on the table. Um, if you're drawing from observation, really good idea is to take a close and careful look at that cast shadow, because there's a lot of interesting structures in there, just like this reflected light core shadow, you're gonna see those in the cast shadow. Um, for the purpose of this exercise, I would just say, you know, get dark right underneath that, that sphere, um, nice and dark. Give it something to, to pull down into, give it a nice base, 
and then as you move out away, get a little bit lighter. is that. It's not the world's best sphere. It's not the world's worst sphere. It's a sphere. I layered, I took my time, I tried my best, and that's all you can ask. If you finish this exercise and you look at your piece and you're like, you know what, this is not what I wanted. I feel like I don't get it. I'm not good enough. The only way to get better is to try it again and not be hard on yourself for your first shot being less than ideal. And if you got a great sphere the first time, awesome. Way to go. Our next drawing technique that we'll learn about is cross hatching. We'll take all the skills that we learned in hatching, apply it, we'll just apply it in a slightly different way.